Hello. Hello. We're back. We're back again. I hope everyone's having a good week. We're going to be doing another build today. Damn expensive build today. Yes, this is an expensive one. Probably the most expensive to date by far. Satisfaction 75 was up there, but this one definitely takes the cake. So this is a key colt number one, Rev 1. Uh, this was sent to me by a client. It was previously built with vintage blacks that were lubed with 205 grade zero. Uh, he wanted me to desolder it and rebuild it for him. So today we're gonna rebuild this with some Duroc linears. These are lubed and filmed. They're lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero. These are apparently a switch that only ran for a limited time in South Korea. They have a smoky black bottom with like kind of a yellow creamy banana type colored top it might not come up on camera but it's kind of like a creamy yellow pretty cool looking actually and these turned out really nice so I'm curious to see how it feels on the board so board has been desoldered PCB tests good uh, we're gonna retune the stabilizers before we get started uh, for those that don't know the key Colt Number one, Rev1 is a gasket mounted TKL. This one has a brass plate. I don't know if I'm going to pull the case out right now because it's a disassembled. Actually, I could show y'all. So this, this key colt is a gorgeous deep navy blue. I don't know if y'all can see that, but my God, this is such a rich deep blue. Just gorgeous. Oh, it's a plush build today. Yeah, this is a, a pretty big one. This is the bottom. Finishing is on point. It's perfect. Just gorgeous. This blue is just nuts. It kind of looks black on stream, but that's probably just because of the lighting. Just a beautiful board. And it is gasket mounted. Which just kind of takes the cake, right? We love gasket mount over here. Let's get this closed up. So we'll, we'll look at the keyboard case a little bit later. Once we have everything assembled, we're going to get started on the stabs. So I hope everyone's doing okay. Things have been getting kind of crazy lately. I know a lot of places are telling people not to leave their homes and and all of that. I hope everyone's doing all right. I have quite a few really cool projects coming up that I'm kind of on the fence about streaming. Um, one that in particular that I'm excited about is taking an IKBC MF87 pre-built and turning it into a hot swap board. Um, I'm actually considering more and more doing that on stream. Uh, fairly straightforward and uh, kind of fun because that's a really nice pre-built. Cyberfluff sucks, scuff his board. <laughs> 
All right, I'll do it off stream though, okay? <laughs> yeah, I mean the key cult is a board you want to be careful with, for sure. How are you doing? I'm okay. Things have been pretty crazy, like just like going to the grocery store or to the gas station. Uh, I live in northern Texas, and things aren't, I mean, as far as like the numbers go, we're not like crazily affected yet, but uh, stores are still like, people are panicking. It's kind of weird. Thank you, Dono Incoming. Yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take your key, Cole, as a dono. Just PM me. I'll give you my address. Yeah, lots of cool stuff coming up. Uh, the IKBC MF87 is one that I'm really looking forward to. I think that board gets slept on quite a bit. As far as like modding and stuff goes. Uh, it actually has a lot of potential, and it's an all-aluminum board, too, like for a pre-build. That's pretty nice, and uh, it assembles and disassembles just like custom wood. B-stock anyways. Hey, I'll take B-stock. Who cares? I don't know. A key, key cults are one of those things where it's like, are you really getting a thousand dollars more than other high end TKLs? Probably not. But you're definitely getting the clout and the flex and all of that. Like the TX87 in front of me isn't too far off the key cult as far as the materials being used the quality of the anodization and whatnot it really is just the name but if you're really into keyboards that is something that might be important to you like you know people who are into like bags and shit like chicks who are into like purses like no like those expensive purses aren't going to be like mind-blowing compared to other hundred two hundred dollar bags but they still buy them because it's nice to have like cool exclusive shit sometimes right jane best oh that's another build that i have in my queue too i do have a jane in my queue so we'll probably do that on stream yeah just one of those things like i don't i don't see myself getting like a key call or a jane or like any of those super f like clout high ends for a while i'm i think i prefer to have a lot of other boards than just one really expensive boards because I like to um, swap out my keyboard that I use pretty frequently I feel like I'd be a little bit trapped if I just had like one really high end instead of like three cheaper high ends key cold slash Jane is worth it for you win the raffle yeah I don't win anything though Having a one end game board is not bad either. It just depends on who you are, right? Like for me, a lot of the fun I get out of this hobby is like trying a whole bunch of different stuff and configurations. And like just being tied down to one board is like kind of the opposite of that. I can really hate winning Peve hands. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I don't want anything. What makes a Jane so pricey? The name. The name. The quality is top-notch, too, of course. But really, you're buying brand. That's just my opinion. You know, I'm sure I'll get crucified for that, but it's the name. Which I don't think, there, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. It just depends on who you are and what you want. Don't let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't do regarding your own personal preference. Jane isn't really pricey in group buy, only aftermarket is pricey. Yeah, true. It's mostly clout that makes it pricey, yes. I mean, it's not just clout. Obviously, they're fantastic boards. But there's nothing like... 
godlike about them. You know, they're not like insane or, you know, so incredibly better than everything else that it justifies the price. It really is just the name. Wow, I was muted this whole time. My apologies. I was going on about how there's a board that I'm interested in that I've been kind of looking into lately. This is the 7V. It's been an interest check for a really long time. Probably over a year now. And uh, it's at a pretty steep price at $450 but it looks really promising and uh, I love the design. I'm gonna see what I can do about getting involved in that group by, but we'll see, that's 450 is pretty, pretty high. Kiko TKL is really expensive at 900. See 900, I could see myself at 900. Uh, but aftermarket prices is a little out of my league. Number one was 515. That's even better. Yeah, that's that's a no-brainer. The problem is you have to win the raffle, which I don't win anything. But again, like at the end of the day, you're not getting like, like at 900, are you getting $500 more than a $400 board during group buy? Mm. Not really, but you're buying the brand. You're buying the flex, the clout, etc. Just depends on what's important to you. I could see myself with a key cult one day, but uh, maybe further down the line once I've explored as much as I want to. I have so much fun like trying different configurations and layouts and and boards. It's just uh yeah. 
I know. He he hangs out with me like the cat. He hangs out with me basically all day, every day. But because we're working with hot soldering irons and and lubricant that gets hair and everything, he's got to stay out. But he doesn't like that very much. What is your daily driver in hell? I don't really have a daily driver. I kind of rotate through boards pretty frequently. Uh, I'd say... And this answer changes every time I get asked this question. But I'd say right now, my quote-unquote favorite board would be my Kira 80 TKL. That I have a Suo TKL PCB in it with Milmax sockets installed. And it's built with uh, Mavs lubed with 3204. I've been really enjoying that lately. Um but I probably don't go even two days without swapping out my keyboard. Uh, the board in front of me is a TX87 SE, and that is also with a Suo TKL PCB that has Milmax sockets installed. And right now it has Milky Gateron yellows with uh, lubed with 205 grade zero inside. I mean, yeah, like changing switches, changing boards, everything, like, that's a lot of the fun for me. So, like, having having Milmax sockets is something that I like. Having a bunch of different boards is something that I like. Um, you know, I like to change switches and boards very, very often. That's a nice build. Yeah, I mean, I have a, a 512... Uh, polycarbonate 60% as well that has silent alpacas in it right now but that one um, lately hasn't been seeing as much use as my other ones uh, just because I need to film those silent alpacas and I just haven't gotten around to it yeah and I have more boards than I can handle coming soon Waiting on shipping information for two Polaris boards. And then um, I purchased a Duck Octagon V3 extra that's being anodized right now. And uh, I was also involved in the Switch Coacher Alice group buy. Uh, so quite a few boards to look forward to and try out. That Alice board is going to be the first time I've like really sat down and tried the Alice layout. Uh, so I'm a little bit excited about that. What switches do you have problems with the Milmax? Do Zeal switches fit well? Uh, I did have to file down some of the pins on my Zeal switches to get them to work. Uh, but it's not a big deal. It, so it takes like 10 minutes. You just swipe the uh, thinner leg or thicker leg just two or three times on each switch and move on. Uh, but not a problem. Why oh, watch your cat's name? His name's Dexter. He's he's an old boy. But he's very, very used to being in here. He doesn't like it when I have to work. Oh, you bought the Switch Coacher Alice? I did, yes. I got the black Alice version with the frosted bottom. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, pretty affordable, all things considered, as far as like buying a keyboard goes. So I figured it's like the best, cheapest way to try out the layout. We'll see, I'll let you guys know for sure. I might build that on stream. I don't see why I wouldn't. I'm gonna put Zelio 67 gram lubed with 3203 in the Alice. Is Alice wind keyless? I believe it is, yeah. It is wind keyless. 
Uh, but you get a couple extra keys in the layout, I think. Shouldn't be too hard if Windows keys is like something you have to have. Okay, stabs are lubed with any luck. We'll get it first try, but we'll see. Mac usually here, so need the win key, irony. Well, QMK, right? You can always remap. The power of QMK. I usually go win keyless if I can. If I have a choice, I'll go win keyless. I just prefer the aesthetic. I like blockers. Huge fan. I think blockers make the board look so much cooler, especially if you like have a nice colored board. I like that the case or the blockers kind of come up on the face of the board a little bit. So something I noticed, and now this PCB is I mean, it's just like any other PCB, right? But I noticed that for the screws for the stabs, it actually has like padding around the screw hole. So you don't need washers. Like that's awesome. I hope more people do that. Like that's such a good idea. So I won't be using washers today because we don't need them. Only need Sangin bottom row. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I like Sangin. I think, I like the, the look of it. I think if I had a choice, I would choose 6.25U space over 7U. Um, don't get me wrong, I still end up running Sangin on like most of my boards, but I do prefer a shorter space bar. One second, never look back. Yeah, the split backspace thing is a little bit strange. I go back and forth on that. The, the way I look at it is if you're running 65% or smaller, split your backspace. If you're running 75% or larger, don't split your backspace. That's how I see it personally. Uh, obviously, you can do whatever you want with your keyboard. Don't let me decide. But that's usually my rule of thumb. Like on my Polaris boards, I'll be running split backspace on both of them. Like pretty much full Sangin. Uh, but like on my Duck Octagon, for instance, I'll be doing full backspace. I believe a newer AI03 and Hiney PCBs also have the pads for the stab screws, but that's mostly as a precaution for newer builders. I like that trend. But the thing is, is this this board isn't like really a new board, is it? This, the number one red one's been out for a while, I thought. So kind of ahead of its time a little bit. But I definitely appreciate it. It's just, it's about the little things, right? The little things, they really add up. Screw down. We dropped a screw, but we found it. I've seen people go right in and drop 2.5K on a number two and just not get anything else. That is not me. That's not me. 2.5K, dude. I mean, we're talking about three high-end TKLs you could buy with that money. Three. You get to try three different boards. I think I'd rather go that route for now. 
like yeah if i liquidated my collection i could get it like a key cult or a jane or whatever but i like having the variety it's like putting on a new shirt every morning who wants to wear the same clothes every day unless that's you if you wear the same clothes every day that's fine make sure you do your laundry though key cult is nice but not 2.5k nice I mean, look, like, based on the materials that are in it, is it worth 2500 bucks? Probably not. But rarity, exclusivity, name, all of that has value, too. When we, when we look back in 20 years... <clears throat> And we look back in this period of keyboard history, so to speak. Key Colt will be a name that sticks out as one of the best. So you are buying a piece of what will be keyboard history. And that has value. All of the little random group buys the smaller group buys and everything like well yes they are really nice high-end boards are not going to be remembered like Kiko will and humans are weird we value that kind of stuff if you just consider build quality do you think rama board is up there in the same league as Kiko? <clears throat> hmm. well i wish i could I could answer that question with any kind of honesty, but I have not seen a Rama board in person, so I couldn't really tell you. Uh, I don't want to give inaccurate information or anything. I just don't have experience with it, so I can't say. I'd love to build one one day though. I think. I think we're gonna put minimal on this. Are you gonna build your Polaris when it comes in? Of course. Of course I will. It certainly won't sit in a box. The one I had was the N65A, which is not really the same quality as the newer ones. How so? I thought all the Rama boards were like pretty much the same other than the, like the form factor. Is that wrong? What switches are going in? These are Duroc linears. These were a special limited run Duroc linear that was run in South Korea, apparently. These have a black smoky bottom with a like creamy banana colored top. These are filmed and lubed with 205 grid zero. Yeah, I don't know a whole lot about ROM boards to be honest. Um, I remember early on in my keyboard journey, so to speak, um, I was exposed to some opinions about Rama boards that kind of from other people that just kind of stuck with me for some reason and I never really gave them an honest chance. Um, so I haven't had the opportunity to try them or build one. As smooth as alpaca. Are these as smooth as alpacas? Um, No, but they're pretty damn smooth. They're smooth enough for me. But I would say alpacas are smoother. Not by much, though. M65A was designed to be a budget. So it had nylon bottom. Interesting. I didn't know that. Interesting. What were those opinions? Um... Mostly that 
the boards were built and uh, okay let me preface this by saying these are opinions from other people that i have unintelligently adopted with no experience or evidence to support it and that i am simply expressing my inherent biases towards something i've never seen or experienced in real life so now that that's out of the way um when i was in my young impressionable keyboard days uh, I had heard a lot from others that the Rama keyboards were built purely for aesthetics and that they didn't perform or sound as good as other keyboards in their price range. Is it true? I don't know. I've never built a Rama board. I've never typed on one. So it's hard to say. I don't know. But for some reason that resonated with me and uh, my inherent biases prevented me from exploring them a little bit more outdated opinion but possible back then oh yeah i'm sure i'm wrong i've been surprised i you know i've been wrong in the past like if y'all were here for the duck octagon v3 build i was totally wrong about that too uh the typing angle was actually pretty nice and back then you know a few weeks ago i was like I will never buy a duck board. 11 degree typing angle is just stupid. Who would do that? That's so dumb. Blah, blah, blah. Well, guess who's waiting on their Octagon V3 now? Me. Board sick. I mean, I've been wrong in the past, so I'm open to having my opinion changed. But the thing is, is I haven't tried a Rama board yet, so my opinion is just based on nothing, essentially. I'm willing to admit that. Uh, let me grab the keycap. We're going to play around with GMK Minimal today. Duckboard side RGB is cool. I love the side profile of the duck, duck boards. You're waiting too? You snagged one of those extras too? What color did you get? Honestly, that's the board I'm most excited for right now silver okay oh it's you you have a different name everywhere yeah silver like the duck boards just do silver so well I love it I've heard that the Rama boards had a bad typing experience. Hopefully the U80 and M65B with the new mute sound will change that. I've heard that too, but I just don't know how true it is. Backspace sounds really good. Enter sounds good. Right shift sounds good. Left shift good. Damn, first try. First try. We're in business, ladies and gentlemen. Full size right shift, Dan's game. Yeah, don't ask me. This is for a client. Look, all right. I've said it before. I'll do this. I'll do this rant. I'll rant about this for a second. Look at your keyboard. Just take a second to look at your keyboard. And ask yourself... 
how often do I use the right shift? And just be honest with yourself, right? Just be honest. How often do you use your right shift? Oh, almost never, you say? So why the fuck is the right shift one of the longest keys on the keyboard? Why? Why is it the second largest key on the keyboard? Why? It makes no sense. Which is why I always say, if your keyboard, if you look at your keyboard and your right shift is larger than your left shift, get out. Pepe fat man. <laughs> look, full size right shift is wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> it's bad and you should feel bad. Like what, what do you need all that right shift for? You don't. I actually use right shift a lot. You need to type semicolon for emotes. <laughs> I use my left shift like 99% of the time. The only time I use right shift is like when I'm typing a question mark. And even then it's like 50-50. These are actually pretty smooth. Uh, I think dark linears, while they've been getting a little bit more popular, especially lately with like the mobs and the alpacas, they're a little bit unrealized right now. I bet y'all didn't know you can just go buy these in mass off AliExpress. They're basically alpacas. Yeah, if you speak in emotes only, you need right shift. Maybe that's where we're going as a human race. We're just going to we're just going to all be typing to each other in emotes. I could see it happening. I kind of type so if I need a right hand alpha, I'll use left shift, but if it's a left hand alpha, I'll use right shift. Okay. Okay, we're getting somewhere, right? The man says Sometimes I do use my right shift. Okay. All right. That's fair. It's a man who knows what he wants. But the question remains, why is it the second largest key on the keyboard? The space bar makes sense, right? You can hit it with both thumbs. It needs to be larger so that, you know, the thumbs aren't as dexterous as your other fingers, the other digits on your hands. So having a large space bar helps, uh, helps your thumb like reach it quickly. But the right shift is the second largest key on the entire keyboard. And even you said you only use it half the time. I don't know. It's a conspiracy. It's the right shift conspiracy. I'm not buying it. My left thumb my left thumb does doormat while typing. I only use it while gaming. Oh, I think you mean dormant. Yeah. So you use your right thumb for space most of the time then. 65% has trained me to use short right shift. Yeah, 65% pretty much forces you to. And uh Cyberflow, I'm just teasing, man. Like Full size right shift is fine. I always split my right shift, but I understand that especially on these higher end uh, TKLs, most people will do full size right shift just for aesthetic reasons. Um, but I love ranting about this because I have such a strong opinion on the right shift, and it seems like most people don't like really care or no, like notice but yeah i always split my right shift another benefit of that is you don't have to fuck with another stab so there's that you know before i get in too deep here i know i tested the stabs already
but I'm going to give them another listen just to make sure. I, I don't, I really don't want to get this all built up and realize there's a little bit of ticking or something. I like 60% with F arrow and arrow key, F row and arrow keys. Is there, is there a keyboard like that? Uh, no, there's not. The nature of being a 60% keyboard is that it's missing those. Uh, that's what makes it a 60%. There are boards. There are boards that um, have like a small form factor. A smaller form factor that include all those keys. And I think what you're looking for is called a Stabs actually sound pretty good. Sang and lay out and replace the number row with F keys. <laughs> That's big brain. But I do not like the home row column box. You what? The home row column box. This part, like this, so this right here. Home row column box, yes. I don't believe 75% boards have a home row column box. This is TKL. This is 80%. Uh, something like the KBD 75, the Godspeed 75, Duck Octagon V3, or any Octagon for that matter. Uh, those are all going to be 75% boards. The ones, the one in front of me is a is TKL. 75% boards won't have like this section right here that's like laid out like this. It'll have another column, but it'll also go up one more column. What are the Duroc Linears called on AliExpress? They are called Duroc Linears. Uh, you just go to Duroc's page on AliExpress and you'll find them. I have to wait to see your Octagon build. Hey, you don't have to wait. I built one a couple weeks ago uh, on stream and the VOD is on YouTube. There's also a VOD in the service general channel of my Discord too. Have you tried Durox L7s? No, I haven't. What makes them different from other Durox linears, though? Um, I think Durox is just killing it right now. I'm super happy with what they're doing lately. Um, holy shit, they make some crazy good switches, man. And these uh, these Durox turned out pretty nice. Uh, the ones I'm putting in the board, at least. You know, every time we have like this Duroc linear conversation, I always think back to like last, like late last summer when I bought into the marshmallow switch group buy. 
Anyone remember that? It kind of just like faded into the wind and it still hasn't shipped. What the hell? How long does it take to make some switches? God damn. Those switches I'm kind of excited to try. They have a shorter actuation or shorter travel, one, one or the other, I can't remember. But pretty excited to uh, feel what that's like. Can you guys believe that GMK sets are like 12 months out now? <laughs> like if you buy a GMK set, in group buy today, it'll be like a year before you get it. That's just crazy. That's crazy, man. A year, one year. It just It's just kind of like a testament to just how much our hobby has grown. Like we're hitting new records for GMK sets all the time. Olivia Plus Plus sold over 4,000 kits. 4,000 kits. That's incredible. We're way too behind now. Yeah, I mean, I could see GMK kind of ramping up their production capabilities here pretty soon. But we'll see. I want GMK Noel. Dude, like, okay. Noel is... Kind of a girly set, dude. I'm not gonna lie. But I like it. I like it. I think it'd look really good on a whiteboard. Rip GMK bleach. What happened to GMK bleach? Tell me that that didn't go under. It's called a weeb set. <laughs> Noel is a weeb set. I mean, let's be real. Like, half of GMK sets are, like, weeb-inspired, like right? So, honestly, y'all should be thanking the weebs because they're the ones coming up with all the good ideas. It's not a weeb set. It's a base that doesn't have Hiragana subs. True. Nothing happened. I'm just not going to buy Bleach if I get it after a year. Yeah, well, welcome to hell. Take a seat next to the rest of us. The way that I look at it is, sure, you could, if you want a set, you could wait till it comes out on the aftermarket or whatever as like a protest and then buy it, but you're just going to be paying more and the time is going to pass regardless. You might as well be waiting on the set that you want at the cheapest price you can get it, right? So I don't mind waiting. It's just unfortunate. I suppose. And I've bought into a lot of keyboard or uh, GMK set group buys. Modern Dolce Light, I bought two kits. Olivia, I bought two kits. I bought into Phosphorus, I bought into Cafe. And then I purchased two more GMK white on black sets that were live on drop. This is not a win keyless. TKL like I thought it was. You said you wanted Sangin bottom row, but Sangin has blockers. Do you just want 1.25s or 1.5s on the bottom? I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna pay extra for Hiragana sub on GMK Noel. This feels weep, man. Hiragana subs can be cool. It's not my thing, but I know a lot of people like them. 1.5, 1, 1.5. Okay, I got it. Got it. How many GMK sets do you have now? I have GMK 9s, GMK white on black, GMK minimal, and GMK pulse. So four? I have four.
I really want GMK DMG. DMG was like one of those sets that like nobody gave a shit about until it came out. Now everyone wants it. <laughs> it's all right. It's a good good looking set, I'd say. Not my thing, but you need like the right board to make it work. Yeah, lots of GMK sets coming. And, like, it's just, it's bittersweet, man. Like, I'm glad so many more sets are being made so, like, we get to all enjoy them and stuff and all the new ideas and colors and whatnot. But at the same time, it's, like, a year minimum before you see a set that you buy. Like, but... How much shit changes in a year, man? Like you could, you could buy a set, and then by when it arrives, you've like already outgrown the aesthetic of the set. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like one of those things. GMK needs a factory upgrade. I believe it's already in progress, though. That is fantastic news. They definitely need it. Just by Rama boards, our lead time is close to a year to Pepe laugh. <laughs> true, true. You just you just buy a set. You like figure out when a set you you like is running. You buy it, and then you just buy a Rama board at the same time, and then you'll just get both at the same time. With like huge brain strats. Okay. Omega brain. This bottom row, this is how you want it, right? 1.5, 1, 1.5. 1, 1. Awesome. Sounds good, brother. That is Sangin. I always knew Sangin as like 1.5 blocker, 1.5. But I suppose the wind keyed version would just have the one U in the middle, right? Wind keyless and whiz, wind keyless. There's no other possible layout for a win keyless. Really? You could do a six U space bar. Right? I mean, it's not common, but you could. No? I mean, if you can do a seven U Sangin with two one U Windows keys, you could do a six U with blockers instead, right? Actually, no, you couldn't. I don't know. My brain's too small for these theories. 
This is why I don't design keyboards, I just build them. Okay, so we're just gonna do a visual inspection and make sure that all the uh, switches are seated correctly. Make sure that the plate and PCB are parallel with each other and consistent around the board. We're gonna make sure we don't have any bent pins. You'd need a PCB and plate to support it. Yeah, you would. So far, this is looking pretty good. One of the, I don't wanna say easier, but just one of the nicer boards to work with. The plate is very well made. The switches seat firmly but not not singa firm everything is just nice and seamless to work with i love it so far love it was the tx87 se plate super tight for you too i didn't have problems with the tx87 plate um except for when i built it with holy pandas that was a fucking nightmare. Uh, everything else was fine, though, for the most part. Um, that being said, my TX87 has been my most problematic board, if I can put it that way. And not like big problems, but just little problems. Um, just one of those boards. All right, let me get my... Uh, soldering iron and extractor. Sorry about that. I think my batteries and my trackball are dying. Oh, that's an interesting wind keyless layout. So 1.5 and then 1.25. Interesting. Yeah, that could work. It looks very asymmetrical though. Um, but definitely an option. I think the Godspeed 75 does something like that too, actually. It does, yeah, it does. Huh. I know uh, KBD 8X Extras, not Extras, but B-Stock went up the other day too. There were a few people in our Discord that picked one up. Like I know Drivkin, he uh, he got a nice blue one that turned out really well. Like, you can hardly tell it's even be stuck. I 
four screws were tapped incorrectly. Oof, that's about as bad as it gets. Yeah, unlucky for sure. My B stock 8X MK2 looks better than some A stock I've seen on Mech Market. Yeah, KBD fans, like their B stock sometimes is like not actually B stock. And then sometimes KBD fans A stock is actually B stock. It's weird. I mean, at that price point, you can't really complain too much, but still. Let's kind of clean up the desk a little bit. We should always check, then we should always buy the B-Sock. All I'm saying is like, if you want a board, don't, and you want it from KBD fans, like a KBD fans board, don't let the fact that it's B-Stock like prevent you from picking up a board that you want. How can I put this gently? KBD fans boards aren't going to be something that like rise in value in the aftermarket. Uh, barring a few exceptions, at least right now. So, if you want a board and buy KBD fans, B stock is definitely an option you should look into. Um, and if it is B stock and it does have a ding or a scratch or something, it's not going to like make or break its sellability like some other boards would. Uh, but nothing like wrong with KBD fans boards. I've owned many of them. I've built many of them. Uh, excellent little boards for the price and what you get. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with them. Um, I was talking a little bit about the TX87 before we started talking about that. And I said it was like my most problematic board. Uh, Cyberfluff, you said you had one, right? Do you feel like that board just doesn't sound that good? I like, can't get mine to like sound really good. Like it sounds okay. But my other boards sound way better than it. tried sorbethane i tried neoprene uh, in the bottom and i actually preferred how it sounded without it i think what it really needs is foam between the plate and the pcb That's what I think. I had to use sorbethane for my TXCP to make it sound good. Yeah, I... Like, just from, like, YouTube videos and stuff on sound tests of various TX boards, and I know, like, you know, a YouTube video can only portray so much, but, like, TX boards, you, like, they sound, like, kind of hollow a little bit, and I think that's because of how much material they use in the case. Like, my TX87 is by far my heaviest keyboard that I own. I think it's, like, over 8 pounds. Um, which I think contributes to the sound issues that I'm having with it. Um, it could also be that I use Milmax sockets in my TX87. Uh, I don't think I've ever built it soldered except for like the very first time I built it 
Uh, so that might have something to do with it. I got an extra MK Ultra TKL plate foam I can send you next time I send switches over. I'm not going to use it. Ooh, that'd be awesome, dude. Yeah, let me know. Just shoot me a PM. I don't mind paying for it. It's fine. Uh, I've been meaning to pick one up, so... Because, uh, you know, my Kira 80 has that foam, and I really liked what it did with the Kira 80. I think it would help the TX87 quite a bit. MK Ultra does really good shit. Now, I've been pretty pleased every time I've ordered from him. I know he was struggling quite a bit recently. Uh, but it seems like he's back on his feet, which is just great. It's not every day you see, like, a, a guy, a single guy who runs a, his own company, like, come back like that. I imagine, I mean, he has, like, no competition. So I imagine the demand for his products are insane. Especially considering how much of a pain in the ass it is to, like, cut foam like that yourself. It's really not fun. Cock, welcome. But yeah, I still have your uh, your switches in this box. Equals, you're probably next after. I'm gonna do a matrix next to my queue, a matrix 1.2, I think, and then um, your switches are next in my queue. Can you paste here the YouTube channel link? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Hey, Rid, it would actually be easier if you just went to um, the Discord server and then go to Service General. Uh, I know all of the video all of my VODs I post links to there. My friend cut some foams with his laser printer. He said it was super easy. Yeah, but the big part of that is the laser printer part, right? I know... I certainly don't have a laser printer sitting around. This is so meta, linking VODs of my build stream in my build stream. I love it. Massive brain. What I could do is I could pull up my old build stream and stream during my build stream, my old build stream. And just stream that. Hippo brain or galaxy brain, who knows? I think we're splitting hairs at this point, man. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of people, a little bit of galaxy.
I believe I also have a aluminum Singa in my queue as well. Uh, that one's going to be pretty fun too. I remember when I built the polycarbonate Singa, I was pretty, pretty impressed by it. Thanks again for the build. Working with you was a pleasure. Thanks for streaming too. I can't wait to sub when I get my next Twitch Prime. I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting anxiously. I'm just curious, which board did I build for you? I don't remember building one for you. I didn't know Myonix made keyboards. So yeah, it looks like uh, the Bella 75% that KBD fans is working on. It looks like it's going to be at a $300 price point. Which is like basically right where I imagined it would be. Taku 12SF. Bright lilac keycaps. Yeah, always happy to build a ducky. It's really a shame. They should just start building it themselves and selling them as like a pre-built pre keyboard. I can't wait for you to try out the MF87. It's gonna be a heck of a project, I reckon. That That is a project I'm super excited about. I have quite a soft spot for the MF87. I said this in my last stream, but the MF87 was the board that I owned before I like kind of got into customs and whatnot. And I really enjoyed it. Such a fantastic pre-built. And so to make it hot swap is going to be a really cool project and a little bit nostalgic for me. I'm very excited about it. It's a real nice pre-built. Too bad that the MF87-108 hasn't been in stock anywhere for a while now. I wonder what happened to the production. Yeah, you know what? I actually noticed that. Uh, I actually owned a MF87 and an MF108 at one point. The 87 had cherry reds and the 108 had cherry blues. Um, and they stopped producing them shortly after I bought them. You can't really find them anymore. Uh, 
which is a shame, but I mean, they weren't really like that well known. So it's not like all that surprising. Cherry Blues Kappa. Yeah, this is this was quite a while ago. Um I bought the one of and the MF one oh eight with cherry blues as a way to try cherry blues. This was before I got into customs. Uh, I actually sold that board pretty fast. I did not like blues at all, even though I, I really wanted to love them. The CD87 still has some in stock, but I wonder if it's because people haven't bought them. There was like a plastic version of the MF-108. I think it was called just the F-108, maybe? Uh, I actually owned that too. It was like a white one with cherry reds. Uh, but I haven't seen that board in stock anywhere either. IKBC just makes decent boards. I actually really liked what I tried from them. Like before I got into customs, I was still into mechanical keyboards. I just wasn't into custom mechanical keyboards. I had like a pretty hefty pre-built keyboard collection, which when I look back at it now is a little bit cringy, but I was very happy with them at the time. Um, getting into custom keyboards added a lot of depth to the hobby for me, obviously. Um, but I was definitely one who collected pre-built keyboards at one point. And IKBC was a company I had a lot of keyboards from. I had a poker too. Or I should say a poker as well. And that had cherry clears in it. IKBC, definitely a nice pre-built company. I actually really like the build quality and comparable to some customs, especially for TKL. That's right. I I would say the MF87 is on par with like a lot of what KBD fans would offer. All aluminum chassis. I think it uses a st steel plate or aluminum plate. Um, you know, it looks and assembles and disassembles just like a custom would. Um, no, it's not like a super high end, but it's definitely worth what it costs. Uh, and definitely an option if you're, if you want to like mod it and stuff. I mean, I know what vape kit you use. Uh, let me see if I can remember. I have a Zeus RTA. And then I don't know what mod this is. It's kind of beat up, but I'll show it. It's like, I know it's from Geek Vape. It's like this weird, like, shaped one. But, yeah, I uh, I quit smoking in 2012. I was a pretty heavy smoker back then. And vaping, uh, I hate to sound cliche, but it saved my life. I haven't smoked since. Yeah, the MF87 is one hell of a pre-built board. If you want a high-quality keyboard but are intimidated by the custom world or just want something simple and ready to use, the MF87 is a top-tier option for sure. You should mod your fake kit. <laughs> Maybe one day on stream. Those are good geek vape ones. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, like, a whole lot about, like, vaping. I know I'm not, like, really a hobbyist. Um, 
I do make my own coils and I do rebuild my atomizer, but mostly as an ec economical thing and not an out of necessity rather than interest. I know there are some people that will, some people that do explore like electronic cigarettes as a hobby though. Yanni, did you see the uh, 7V? The 7V 75% board? That's going to be going live on the 10th. It looks really nice. 75% gasket mount. The renders are gorgeous. Definitely a board that I'm going to try to get in on. We'll see. I'm definitely going to have to sell off some stuff to get involved in that, but it looks really nice. I'm waiting for the Satisfaction 75 at the end of the year when it comes out again. Yeah. Uh, I will certainly be joining that group by as well, without a, without a doubt. I built one not too long ago, and it just blew my mind. Wonderful board, the Satisfaction 75. Just incredible. Cannon Keys really outdid themselves on that one. probably have to stay up whenever it comes out it's going to be 450 this time i'm guessing it's adjusting for inflation i'm guessing it's adjusting for demand that's my guess um my only hope is that i can actually get a spot we'll see i imagine it will sell out in seconds Yeah, I've seen SAT 75 being flipped for 1.1k. Yep, I've seen it that high as well. It said there are new tariffs that raise the price. Ooh, I didn't know that. Okay. How many How many do you think they're going to offer? Like, how many spots? I think the last one was like 200 or 250. I imagine it'll be the same. I think round one was like 250, so I imagine at least that many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. Um, the optimist in me would say, you saw the demand. Just make it unlimited. But I think think i don't think that's going to happen but who knows the 7v is going to be unlimited which is bold as hell but uh always always like to see unlimited group buys issue with making it unlimited will be that it'll take forever to ship out. Yeah, depending on a lot of things though, of course. Like Polaris, we're only on like month seven and they sold over a thousand boards and people are still getting theirs. There, People are already getting theirs, I should say. Waiting for my Polaris, yep, me too. Join the club.
saving up for your next build. What you gonna build next? Fiel round five. Ooh, okay. Or wait for Sat seventy five. Very nice options. Or if I can both. That's the strat. That's what you do. Fiel round five is like pretty soon, right? They have a page for it, it's just unavailable right now. Well, that's a good sign. I'm not buying any board until Sat75 lands. It's going to be this year, so you don't have to wait too long. A lot of people are going to be buying into that one. Or trying, at least. The thing is, is like with how well it's doing in the aftermarket, flippers are going to have their eyes on it which kind of sucks because people who actually want the board to use it are going to have less of a chance to get one. On the flip side of that, no pun intended, is that if too many flippers get the board and they all try and sell it, it's going to lower the aftermarket price. Um, you saw that with the, I don't know if you guys pay attention to like gaming mice, but when the final mouse ultralight two came out, a bunch of like bots and flippers bought a whole bunch of them to try and take advantage of how well the other final mouse drops had sold in the aftermarket. And so many bots and so many flippers bought the mice that it actually tanked the aftermarket price. And now they all lost money on it so um, you know you could see that happen again if too many resellers try and buy it just to flip it that's why I might as well just get the fuel I don't know if I will be able to get sat 75 because of how fast it would sell out yeah I'm gonna try Was it a limited group buy for the final mouse as well? Uh, I can't remember if it was limited or not. I don't think it was, but if it was, it, the limit was pretty high. If you have Shopify pay set up, it shouldn't be too hard to get your hand on a SAT 75. I was able to get one of the extras that way. Ooh, okay. I don't know how to set up Shopify pay, but I will look into that for sure. I don't think it was a group buy. They just had stock, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I think it was like a stock that they had. Uh, yeah, it wasn't like a group buy. Like the mice were already made. But I, I got kind of a laugh out of the people who got screwed by that. Or I should say, the resellers that got screwed by that. To 
250 sat 75 boards is such a small amount that flippers would be able to make money on it yeah they'll probably be able to make money on it but if too many flippers buy it it's definitely going to hurt their profit Creams just restocked on Novel Keys if anyone wants to get, get them before they sell in five seconds. Now's your chance. I have very strong opinions about Creams. I think they're bad, <laughs> to put it lightly. I think Creams are just bad. They sound really good, but they're pretty scratchy. They have a weird binding and snagging feel to them. And uh, just not very pleasant to use, in my opinion. I don't like them. They sound good, but other than that, they're, they're not as good as a lot of the other options out there right now, that's for sure. But yeah, I think the whole like Tifu thing... Uh, made them very desirable. A lot of people who weren't really didn't really know anything about custom mechs were inspired to build one or have one built or whatever because they saw that video or because they liked Tifu a lot and um, I'm sure they would just say oh well, I'll, I'll just get whatever switches he got since Clearly, he knows best. Then you end up in a situation where a mediocre switch is worth over a dollar each on Mech Market. I'm glad Tifu didn't have like alpacas or a Drock switch. Man, with how hard alpacas and mobs are to get right now, can you imagine? Oof. Like, alpacas and mobs are hard to get as it is. I need to try out alpacas. Yeah, if you haven't, definitely give them a try. Uh, I have mobs in my Kira 80, and they're incredible like I didn't even know that an MX style switch could get that smooth are mobs recolored alpacas or something like that yeah pretty much they have a slightly heavier spring in them as well but alpacas and mobs, for all intents and purposes, are basically the same switch. I believe they have slightly different housing materials, but um, I've tried both, and it's pretty hard to tell the difference. Yupas ordered different materials, but Durak did not comply. Interesting. Uh, yeah, alpacas are 62 grams. Mobs are 65 grams, I believe. I don't know for sure. I'm just kind of going off how they feel to me.
silent alpacas were 67 grams uh i don't know that i have silent alpacas in my 512 and they're pretty light i don't but i'm not certain Sixty-two gram on the silent alpacas. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. What do you think of silent alpacas versus MX Xylents? Dude, that's a great question. Uh, because I've tried MX Xylents. I made them myself, and I lubed them with two hundred five grade zero. And MX Xylents are fucking insane. Super, super smooth, quiet as hell, but just absolutely fantastic silent linear. Uh, MX Silence. Silent alpacas are pretty different. The just right off the bat, silent alpacas need films. They just need films because they kind of clack a lot without them, um, kind of ruining the whole silent aspect. MX Silence are more quiet, are quieter for sure. Uh, but MX Silence have a much softer bottom out that shortens the travel distance quite a bit. Uh, silent alpacas have a silencing pad that's more akin to something like a Helios or a Gataround Silent Ink. Somewhere in that realm. Uh, it's not soft, but not firm. The distance and travel on the silent alpacas is not as noticeable as it is on the MX Silence. I think if I had to choose, I would choose the silent alpacas after filming them. But MX Xylents are absolutely a fantastic option. And uh, if you prefer sound, like quietness over feel, MX Xylents are going to be the way to go. Uh, but I found that silent alpacas were slightly more enjoyable to use. Based purely off of my own personal preference. Your mileage may vary, of course. Hello, I like your mouse pad. Thank you. Yeah, this is the GMK Coral desk mat. Uh, I usually do, I do a lot of builds on it just because it doesn't match anything I own, so I never use it. <laughs> oh, I see. I love the squishiness of Mech Xylens. Yeah, there's nothing quite like it, really. Um, a lot of people kind of attribute, like, squishiness as bad. But it's not bad. It's just different. And a lot of mechanical switches don't really have that feel so it can feel a little bit foreign to somebody who's not used to it but i i really liked them um it wasn't unpleasant Have you ever felt like integrated plates felt feel too hard to type on? That's what I've heard, so I'm aware of going through purchasing the M60A. Uh, in a, an integrated plate is not something I have a whole lot of experience with, so I can't really say with like like an anecdote on my opinion on that. But I will say just based on like theory that an integrated plate is going to be pretty stiff. Um, whether that's a problem for you or not is kind of up to the individual to decide. I think in the right board, it could be a non-issue. It just really depends on who you are, what you want, and what your tolerances are for sound and fuel and whatnot. 
You know, there are some people out there that prefer steel plates. Um, steel plate is obviously going to be pretty stiff. But it just depends on the person. We have a bent switch leg that I missed. It's definitely harder. That's what I imagine, yeah. I saw the ID80 had an integrated plate, which seemed pretty cool. Hot swap PCB with LED. Oh, nice. I've heard of that board. I've never built one, though. I personally would put silent switches in an M60. That might not be a bad idea. In a board where sound is, like, questionable, silent switches are the way to go. Um, no, you can't go wrong, right? Like, my TX87, while I love this board, is not my best sounding board, so I tend to run silent switches in it. The idea makes sense to me. If you don't like the way a board sounds, just run silent switches in it. Easy. I wonder how like a sandwich mount compares to an integrated plate. I can't imagine there being a big difference because I've tried sandwich mount boards. I do the opposite and put clickies in bad sounding boards. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that'll work too. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of clickies in general, but if I was, that is also the big brain strat. If you have a shitty sounding board, just put silence or cookies in them. Have you tried Zylance V2 from Zeal? I have. Yes, I have. Uh, I have a batch on hand, actually. I've also tried Aqua Zylance as well. I guess I'll lean more towards the Zephyr then, looking for just something to put my modded Telios in. I don't I don't know a whole lot about the Zephyr. Was that Zeal's board? Which one did Zeal make? Oh, that was just the Xeno. I think. Help me out. Tell me about the Zephyr. Zeal was the Xeno vendor. Oh, so Zephyr is Zeal's board then? Honer designed the Xeno? Okay, okay. You said modded Telios. Uh, how did you mod them? Just lube or anything else? Having it. It's the ones we talked about yesterday in pricing. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, Telios are like one of those switches that are super moddable. Like, I've had tons of requests to, like, put different tops on them, put different springs on them, film, all that. Like, I think a lot of that has to do with, like, Tel Telios' reputation for being a super smooth linear switch. And so people like to augment that with different parts and whatnot to try and get different sounds and feels out of them um so very cool man yeah that should be exciting i have like almost 200 turquoise chileos sitting in a box in my parents house um that i bought during the group buy but it shipped before or it shipped after i moved cities 
and I'm about five hours away from where my parents live now, so I just haven't gone and picked them up yet. But I'm thinking that I'll run Turquoise Telios in one of my Polaris builds. I'm not a huge fan of how Telios sound, and that's the biggest problem. Another problem being that a lot of linears these days just flat out compete at cheaper, for cheaper, I mean. 60 gram spritz. Spritz, I love spritz springs. 60 grams, pretty light, but not crazy. Do you have two Polaris coming in? Yes. I have a black wind keyless Polaris with uh, clear PVD brass, so just a regular brass color on the weight. And then I have an E white wind keyless with black PVD brass, so it'll have a black weight and black plate. Oh yeah, I got Sprit 65 gram springs for those silent skies. Let me show you all something. I like I love Sprit springs and they're so hard to get that when I do find a vendor, I I buy shit tons of them. Hold on a sec. Even though I like hardly do any Here's 68 gram progressive. These are spritz. These are 67, 68 gram. 68 gram. 68 gram. Here's some TX 65 grams. Here's some TX 65 grams. TX 65 grams. Let's just say I'm a huge fan of 65 and 68 gram springs. And Sprit makes some of the best. I love them. Uh, TX went in a pinch, but if I had to choose, Sprit would be my choice. 65 for linear, 68 for tactiles for the most part. Although 62, 60 and 62 gram for linears has been growing on me quite a bit lately. Did those sprit springs I sent to you make it there? I think they're coming today. Uh, I haven't checked the lockers today equals, but I will be doing it after this and I'll let you know. They, they're probably there though. I've, I got a notification that there was some stuff coming today. So I imagine it's in there. I was debating TX spring versus Sprit. Hmm, they're, they're not they're, they're not that different, uh, to be honest. But if I had the choice, I'd probably go with Sprit, and I can't really tell you why. I mean, I've used both a lot, and they're both amazing springs. But I just like Sprit more. I, I don't. I can't tell you why. I don't really know why. I just do. Either is loads better than the pingy springs that come with the Temu Silent Skies. Yeah. Uh, Silent Skies are basically mandatory spring swap, in my opinion. They're not good. Tangerines are so nice. They are. I actually, I have a build... Uh, that I'm going to be doing probably tomorrow. 
that has tangerines. And it's the first time I've like been able to mess around with them. And they are, they're pretty damn smooth. Holy shit. Very, very smooth. Uh, on par with like alpacas and mobs, the tangerines. Although L7s have similar smoothness to them. I want to know more about these L7s. This is the first that I've heard of them. You said they were Duroc Linears, right? Forty-two people have them. That's probably why I haven't heard of them. <laughs> Super underrated switch. Been hearing good things about H1s as well. H1s have a ton of buzz behind them. Um, I'm excited, but I'm apprehensive. The video, the typing tests that were posted in the interest check, kind of underwhelming. I'm going to get beat for saying that. I didn't think they really sounded that good. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. It's very hard to get like an actual representation on how a switch or a board sounds just out of a YouTube video. You know? So I'm not trying to knock it before I've tried it. Uh, I'll definitely be picking some up. For sure. But kind of curious about the L7s. Where did they come from? Like, well, how come only so few people have them? Only board I've heard and felt in person was a Zephyr with Milky Top Telios, and I loved it. So that's the direction I'm headed. I've heard of people doing Milky Top Telios uh, fairly frequently. And uh, Milky Tops definitely offer a nice sound. At the end of the day, though, you still have the Telios bottom. So it's not going to, like... You know, it's going to sound similar to a Telios. And I know a lot of people don't like that. Um, it also really depends on the board. Like, I've had Telios sound awful in one board, and then in a different board just sound amazing. Uh, for example, the Tofu 65 with some MK Ultra Foam. Telios sound amazing in that board. But, like, in my TX87, they sound really bad. The Zephyr makes them sound pretty quiet. Nice. And they're only on AliExpress through Direct Store, so I guess people haven't seen much of it. But you could just like buy them right now. Twin Tails. 
Nathan did a typing test I can post it in the Discord. Would you mind? I'd love to see that. Um, Teha types, Nathan did a, an LZMP build yesterday on his stream. And the client he built that for actually had those Telios lubed and modded by yours truly. It was super cool to be able to see switches that I lubed and modded um, get built, get used in a build uh, by Nathan on stream. That was kind of surreal to watch. Link to Absence Discord. Thank you, Twintails. Yeah, you guys can join uh, through that link there. And the LZMP is such a gorgeous board, but it's one of those like boards, like the TX87. And I was saying this last night in my Discord that those like big, like chonky TKLs, they just kind of have like a hollow sound to them and they need a little bit of work to get them sounding good. You know, stuff like foam and, and all that. At least in my experience. getting towards the tail end of soldering here we'll be done here in just a few minutes I wish there were more gasket mounted TKLs out there. I definitely don't mind top mount. Um, it's quite nice actually, but gasket mount is really, really something else. It's a lot more flexible, like quite literally flexible, but also flexible in the sense that you can get a lot of different typing experiences out of gasket mount. Uh, you can induce a really flexy build, or you could, if you like it stiff, you can still have a stiff build, even though it's gasket mount. Uh, super cool mounting style, and if I had to guess, gasket mount is like the way of the future. We are likely to see many, many, many more gasket mount boards. just get a key colt okay i would love a key colt honestly but um you know i like eating food too paying my car payment that kind of stuff maybe one day
Maybe get lucky and win a raffle? Maybe. I'll have to look into that. I think they're doing another number one soon. Really? Hmm. How, how does one go about keeping track of that? Do they have all that information on their website? Picol has a Discord and a newsletter. Okay. Yeah, I'll check that out um, after this. Because I know, like, during the group buys and stuff, the prices aren't that bad. They also have a live stream if you really want to be up to date. Ooh, okay. Yeah, because the number one was like, I think someone said it was like five fifty or something. If if you get if you win the raffle, is that right? I think so. Yeah. See, I could see myself at 550. I mean, that's just a hundred dollars more than what my TX87 costs during group buy. That's actually pretty reasonable when you look at it that way. Number two was 850, 900 extras. What are the major differences between the number one and the number two? I know uh, aesthetically they're quite different. But is that it? That's right. I remember seeing a video about that actually. No visible screws. And then it has like the all brass bottom. Super nice. took me forever to figure out how to assemble yours oh yeah i'm sure it's like one of those like very proprietary designs okay let's get this out of the way
So right now we're just inspecting to make sure we got all the joints. Everything looks good. Missed a switch right here. Okay, let's plug it in and test it. Oh, that's right. So this actually has a daughter board that's connected to the case. So in order to test the switches, we have to actually install it in the case. we'll do that. And this is going to take just a little bit of finesse. But nothing we can't handle. Yeah, sorry, I know that was off camera. Um, in order to get the PCB and the daughter board plugged in properly, I have to kind of put it on my lap. And we're doing USB-C.
Oh, wow. I've been muted again. So what I was saying is there's a gap here between the top and the bottom. Everything looks like it's lined up properly. The plate is sitting on the gaskets properly. but And I think that this gap gets sandwiched when you screw it in. Uh, but I'm not exactly sure, and I don't want to... screw it together without knowing for sure. The client says that that's normal. So we'll give it a try. So pretty bored. It really is. This blue is just incredible. Uh, it looks almost black in certain lighting, and I love it. I'm really interested to hear how much it costs. It cost him at least. Da, 
definitely wouldn't mind having one, that's for sure. One point three K. Never mind. Never mind. Only thirty shipping? That's pretty cheap. I'm glad you have a TX bag with it too. Uh, the TX bags are my favorite keyboard carrying apparatuses, so to speak, uh, that I've ever tried. If any of you have a nice board they want to keep nice during storage and or travel, TX bags are the way to go. Did you scuff his key colt? Uh, yeah, while he was away, I took my car keys to the inside of it. I, uh, I signed my name. I autographed it. Pelican case better. I don't know. The TX bags are pretty nice. I'll go into the TX bag uh, here in a sec. Pelican case would work better if you have like two or three. <laughs> yeah. And you need it to survive like a nuke. Imagine buying Key Colt. I think I have a jealous person in the chat. That's what I think. I think someone's a little jealous. Hose mad. That's right. And yes, as explained to me, this gap has been reduced by simply securing the case. Sound test? Yes, very soon. We'll be doing a sound test very soon. Man, this board is just gorgeous. What a it's just a piece of art, man. Just a piece of art. My camera doesn't know justice. Incredible. Just incredible. Just going to give this another wipe down. So I just put my fingers all over it. Always jealous of Key Colt. They're nice. Now, the big question is how does it feel and how does it sound? And those questions have yet to be answered by me. So, but soon. Very soon. I'll give you five grand for your dream. You guys are hilarious, dude. So we're gonna put GMK Minimal on this. I can think of no better set, to be honest.
I'm actually liking uh I'm actually liking 1.5 1 1.5 1, 1. it's saying in uh, bottom row It looks good. I've never tried it just like without blockers. How long does it take for white keycaps to yellow? I don't think keycaps like this are ever gonna yellow. Uh, if they do, it's gonna be a very long time. I don't think yellowing is something that really happens to this type of plastic. Um, I think maybe if you like had really gross hands or something, you could get them to yellow. Uh, but I think they're going to shine before anything else. Ooh, I have a good feeling about this. It's the only non-shit when key layout and layout. <laughs> What keyboards do you own, sir? Uh, at this point in time, I own a TX87 SE. That's on my desk right now. I own a Kira 80 TKL. And I own a 512, which was a private 20 slot group buy for a 60% polycarbonate wind keyless gasket mounted keyboard. I have quite a few in the pipeline though. Pretty new to the hobby was worried about Moto Light yellowing because I have sweaty hands. Moto Light won't yellow on you, man. I wouldn't worry about that. Um, they will start to shine over time uh, due to the friction and oils from your hands. But this is something most people have just come to terms with in exchange for the quality of GMK. Uh, it does take a while for keycaps to shine, um, but definitely something that will happen. I avoided EPBT over warping rumors, especially in the space bar. Uh, anyone that watches my streams on a regular basis knows how I feel about EPBT. Uh, it's not worth the trouble that it causes, in my opinion. Um, I was all in on EPBT for a long time and just had so many issues that I have decided to convert entirely over to GM, GMK. So EPBT is, yeah, it's not worth it in my opinion. If you really like PBT and really want to use EPBT, at least get yourself uh, ABS modifiers, like an accent kit or something. Um, but I know that PB EPBT and GMK have slightly different heights, just just barely different heights. And so you might run into um, some issues there, but EPBT is like not even on my radar anymore. CRP cheapness, great. I haven't tried CRP. I've heard good things from a few people, but I haven't tried it myself.
but I know that even even PBT keycaps that are manufactured by like other manufacturers still have problems. So just be wary. Do your research, figure out if it's something that's gonna bother you or not. Uh, it certainly did bother me. I will say this board wears GMK Minimal very, very well. Something about blue and white just speaks to me. Sorry about that. I was muted again. I was saying uh, GMK minimal, like, yeah, it goes with everything. But I've been apprehensive about using it because I don't want it to shine. But we have keycaps on it. I'm going to show it off here in a second. Man, this looks clean as hell. Beautiful keyboard. Holy shit. Imagine not liking shine. I mean, I don't mind shine that much. Um, it doesn't like really bother me aesthetically. It's just GMK Minimal is so nice and I don't see myself ever having another set of GMK Minimal. And so I want to keep it at, like as nice as I can. It's just one of those catch 22s. That's a keyboard. Holy shit. So not a whole lot of flex, um, just due to the brass plate, uh, but a minimal amount. You can certainly feel it. But we're going to do a typing test because I know I'm very curious to see what it sounds like. So we're going to do that. So let's see if I can do this. Do 
think that should be good. I think you guys can see. Definitely can see that. Okay, I'm gonna bring the mic down to the keyboard. I want another try. I felt out of my element there. Let me try this with the wrist rest. This is normally how I type. These are Duroc Linears. They were a special edition um, yellow version that ran in South Korea. Yeah, I know that the accuracy on that was pretty cringe, but we're going to run it back. We're going to run it back. But we're going to do it on this can. Okay, here we go. Okay, it feels pretty nice. The switches are super smooth. The sound, it's about as good as Duroc Linears are gonna sound. Um, they kind of have like a weird clackiness to them, but that is pretty common these days. Duroc Linear can sound pretty good, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know. It sounds okay.
I don't know why my audio keeps muting. I think it's, I think I have a key that's bound. And when I'm fucking around with the, with the keys, it accidentally gets hit. So that's my bad. I'll fix that for the next stream. But this is gorgeous, man. This, this keyboard, holy fuck. I don't even know what to say, dude. Just incredible. I hope you enjoy it, Cyber. It feels amazing. Switches are really nice. They sound decent. I would be very happy with something like this on my desk. You like it better than the SAT 75. <laughs> oh man, do I like it better than the SAT 75? Hmm. How many keyboards do you have? Currently I have three, uh, but I have a lot more coming. I had to liquidate my collection because I moved to cities recently. Do I like it better than the SAT 75? <clears throat> this is what it comes down to for me. If I had a choice, I wouldn't use a 7U spacebar. Because you get this sound. I don't know if you guys can hear this. You get this kind of hollow sound to your spacebar. It's happened on every 7U board that I have built and owned. Uh, it's not bad, it's just different than a smaller spacebar would sound. And I think that it feels and sounds a little worse than 6.25U. That's just my opinion. I know you can disagree with that. That's just kind of how I feel about it. Um, I'd say it is a better typing experience than the Satisfaction 75. Uh, it's This is as good as it gets as far as typing experiences go. Uh, I'm sure you could augment it with like a poly plate to make it a little bit more comfortable. <clears throat> But even then, we're just splitting hairs at that point. You're kind of just talking about preference. Um, but the Satisfaction 75 has some gimmicks and aesthetic design choices that make it cooler. I mean, this is a TKL keyboard. It's a rectangle. It is TKL. There's nothing flashy about it. There's nothing uh, outlandish about it. The SAT, the SAT 75 makes a statement on what it is. And I think it makes that statement pretty well. The key quote TKL is doing the opposite. It's making an understatement. It is a sleeper keyboard by all definitions. That's definitely really far from as good as typing experience gets. It's really good. Yeah, I guess what I mean is you're you're at the upper echelons of like what you can get out of a keyboard as far as like what we know right now. <clears throat> sure, you can you can augment like the plate or the gaskets to tailor it to your preference. But this is there would need to be a revolution in mounting technology in order to like really get something much better than this. I hope that makes sense. For my first build, do you recommend me getting like a $250 custom keyboard? I think $250 is kind of an awkward price range for entering the custom world. Um, I'd say add $100 to that and yes, definitely. Try a PC half plate on that if you want your mind blown. That is definitely something that I think would. I don't want to say help, but uh, change the feeling drastically. I, I personally think it would be a move in the right direction. I have been really enjoying softer plates lately, but PC half plate is significantly better on key colts. It certainly would flex more. 
there's a minimal flex with the brass plate. I mean, I can get it to flex a little bit if I push pretty hard, but it doesn't, it, it's not a flexy keyboard. Honestly, if you put this in front of me and put my Kira 80 next to it, and I had no idea which one, like which keyboards were mounted which way, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference um, without hearing that flexing sound. Um, but I'm sure Keycult releases the plate files. No? I'm sure you could get other plates for it if you wanted to try it out. But if you like brass plates... This is pretty nice. It's harder to get PC plates cut. I have noticed that uh, it is a lot harder to get polycarbonate plates. <clears throat> Do the sprit spring curves correspond to switch type? i.e. should one match a slow spring with tactiles for optimal feel or is it preference and switch type is irrelevant uh the latter so it's just preference if you are at all confused just get the standard springs <clears throat> i have not tried rubber band gasket i haven't tried that yet But this was a super fun build. I'm glad uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to try it out and build it up. This is the first key cult that I've ever done. I've never built a key cult before, so this is the first time I've been able to experience what they're like. I would love to own one one day. And this one in particular, this specific board, is just gorgeous. The blue is just, whew, this is right up my alley right up my alley just absolutely gorgeous hey cyber what keycaps are you putting on this what do you normally put on it gmk dots Ooh, okay okay you have to take some pictures when you get it that about does it for me guys i'm gonna remove the keycaps and get this all boxed up and cyber i'll have this out to you tomorrow i appreciate you guys tuning in before the key cult build uh i should have another build next week but uh of course you can always just check the discord i post regular updates on when i'm going live and what services i'm completing and when uh the discord link is down below in the description but ggs guys thanks for coming in have a good day